you guys have about $1,000 to spend on a PC, you really need to pay attention. Not only for a fantastic gaming and streaming experience, but also for fluid content creation. And that's exactly what we're going to be building today. So in this video, we're going to go over all the parts that are in front of me, including recommended edits to keep it on that $1,000 price range. We're then going to do a beautiful build montage. I have some new camera gear, so this should be quite a special one. And then after that, I'm going to talk you through my building experience and go over the performance numbers. So $1,000, you should really be building this. Let me show you why. So let's start with the case. This is the Dark Flash DLM21, a micro ATX case. Yes, we're going to do a micro ATX build today. Micro ATX is a fantastic form factor and it really does not get enough love and attention. And this case is a perfect example of that. And for $55, it punches way above its weight class. It has a hinge tempered glass side panel, a mesh front panel for airflow. It supports micro ATX and mini ITX. In the front, you've got space for three 120 millimeter fans. In the top, again, you've got 120 millimeter fan spacing or 140 to give you a 280 or 240 millimeter radiator. And then in the rear, you've got space for a 120 millimeter fan and four PCI slots. I've built so many full-size ATX builds and rarely have I ever used anything more than a single graphics card, which is why mini ITX has become so popular. But micro ATX allows you that small amount of expandability that you might potentially need in the future without going for a completely oversized motherboard. So next up, we have the MSI Ventus X2 3060 Ti. And I know, I know, they're very hard to come by at the moment, but I tell you what, stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna show you my tips and tricks for getting RTX 30 series, Radeon 6000 and Ryzen 5000 CPUs. Our storage is going to be 512 gigabytes of the SX8200 Pro from XPG. I have recommended these drives a lot in the past, but they have changed the controller recently, which makes them perform a little less than they used to maybe like a couple months ago, but they are still great drives for the price. For our processor, we're going for the Ryzen 5 3600. This is still a fantastic CPU. It is one generation old, but it means that you can find discounts at the moment, and you can pick them up for around about $160 on a good deal. And with six cores, 12 threads, and a boost up to 4.2, this is going to be more than enough for what we need. Our memory is going to be the Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB, which I think looks incredible. For our motherboard, we're going for the ASRock B550 Steel Legend Micro ATX. This is a fantastic motherboard at $150, $50. Gives you support for DDR4 at 4,733 MHz or above. PTIE 4.0 for the latest graphics cards and high speed storage. And also an M.2 E key for a Wi Fi module. That is a great implementation. As well as two RGB headers, two addressable RGB headers, and a 7.1 audio solution with a fantastic chipset. And on top of all of that, two and a half gig networking as well. And I will remind you a $150 motherboard. That is insane and gives you a great upgrade path to Ryzen 5000. Next up, keeping our CPU cool, which is an interesting choice. We're actually going for the Wraith Prism. This isn't the cooler that comes with the 3600, that is the Wraith Stealth. It'll give you a little bit more overclocking room, but it'll also look fantastic as they're ARGB coolers. And you can pick them up for about $20. Powering our system is the Corsair RM650i, and this is one of those things that I'd probably recommend that you exchange for something else and check out the recommendations in the video description for that. And then I decided to go for some custom budget ARGB fans, which in my opinion look fantastic. So let's see how they perform. So those are all the parts, and check out the video description for links to them, as well as the recommended edit that I mentioned before, but otherwise I think it might be time to build this. Let's do it. And I've been chilling, watching the ocean with you. Baby up with a slow motion crew. And we up in our growlings when people change, but not us. And we just chilling, kicking it, kissed by the sun. Could be soaked to the skin in the monsoon. I know she got the good vibes when seasons change, but when Well, that is a very good looking system. I'm really quite impressed with that. This is a system that I would be happy to display on my desk and show off to the world. 
Could you get higher performance for the price tag? Yeah, probably. There's a few areas that we could have sacrificed, especially with RGB fans, etc. But you do have a great upgrade path with this system and performance versus aesthetics. I think this is a true winner. But there are a couple of things that I did want to touch on with the building experience. The case, I think they missed an opportunity. If you cut out the basement section about twice the amount that it currently is, you'd be able to fit a 360 millimeter radiator in there easily. At the moment, it looks like that you can do a 240, potentially a 280, probably a 280. I would double check that if I were you. But you'd definitely be able to do a 240 or 280 in the top. It's just a shame that you can't fit a 360 in there. It just feels like a, a missed opportunity. But otherwise, I did want to touch on these fans. They do look incredible, especially for the price. They were very cheap fans. But they use their own controller, which means that they're permanently linked to that controller to control the fan speed and the RGB. You can hook in the RGB from your motherboard, as in ASRock Polychrome is controlling all of these fans, which I prefer over a controller. And the controller does have a remote if you don't have an addressable header on the motherboard, which is good. But, but the fan speed control is voltage control from that controller box. Now that makes it a bit annoying because you can't use PWM to control the fans based on speed. You have to do it based on voltage and the lowest two settings of that controller box are too low for the fan, which means that it pumps in and out as in which is very annoying. The voltage it's supplying is too low for the fans to sustain a speed which seems fine, you turn it up to number three, which is what it currently is on, and they are pretty loud. That's louder than I would like, but I'm a bit of a silence freak. But then again, they're like $25 for a three pack. I mean, I guess, what was I expecting? So let's find out how it performs and play some games, run some benchmarks. Okay, so we might as well start with everybody's favorite broken game, Cyberpunk 2077, running at ray tracing medium. This is DLSS 1440p. We're sitting in the high 50s into the 60s, low 60s, um, with ray tracing enabled. So that's not bad at all, especially with how punishing this game can be. Shoot the car. Hello. And then driving around, my favorite drift car. This car just slides all over the place. Horrendous, like what's with that? Like, what is this driving mechanic? Hi. Oh no, I died. Okay, so not a bad gaming machine at all, especially with how treacherous Cyberpunk can be. But what I'm going to do is play a few other games and throw up some numbers for you now. So it really does game as good as it looks. It's a really nice 1440p machine. And one thing that I did want to help you guys out with is getting these graphics cards, 3060s, 3070s, 80s, 90s, Radeon 6000, Ryzen 5000. I'm going to drop in the video description links to a few discords and a few applications that will actually help you get these parts. I've been a member of a few of them for a little while now, and I've seen the stock increase come week by week by week. And if you're a member of the channels below, then you're probably gonna get the items that you're looking for pretty quickly. It's just a case of being on top of it. But otherwise, check out all the parts in the video description below. And if you're not subscribed, get subscribed, turn on notifications to make sure that you don't miss upcoming builds and future videos. But otherwise, guys, a like is always appreciated, and I will see you in the next one.